Today marks our eighth Sunday worshiping together online. It seems almost routine. Yet as we discussed last week, no matter how much we do so, no matter how grateful we are that we can, it is just not the same. And the reality is that the way in which we worship is likely never to be the same again. But life is filled with changes, some good, some not, some a little bit of both. One thing that never changes is God's love for us. Biblical stories that reach back at least 4,000 years affirm that God's love has always been a constant. What has not has been our willingness to accept it. Humanity has a history of becoming full of itself. Pride, greed, self-indulgence have all led us to do some terrible things over the centuries. And all have led us to a place where our need to know God's love seems, seems less important. And then something happens. Sometimes it's something big. Sometimes it's not. And we find our self-confidence, our self-reliance, shaken. And we seek the assurance of that which is only found in the familiar. For those of us who have known the joy of God's love in our lives, at least at some point, it is the one thing that is familiar enough to us that brings us great comfort, that helps us recenter our lives, and that gives us the strength we need to get through those really tough times. We know this, but have we ever wondered, what do those who do not know God's love see? If they have never known the peace God's love offers? Sadly, many seek nothing because there is nothing for them to see. Others will wander looking for something, not knowing what it is they are looking for. Some will find their ways into a faith community, thanks be to God. While others will seize on to things that offer them false hope and encouragement turning a blind eye to that which stands right before them. Sometimes they will do this out of stubbornness, but often it's because they do not know what it is they have encountered. How could they? Unless, like the Ethiopian eunuch who Philip meets along the road to Gaza, someone comes along to tell them to explain to them what it is they have encountered. That is where we come in. As we heard last week, when we search for God, even in those times we can't find the Lord, the Lord can and will find us. Sometimes the Lord does so in some pretty clear and distinct ways, as he did with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. But the Lord also does so in less dramatic ways, too, through us, through those God places in our lives, like he did with Philip for the eunuch, to help them, or us, to understand. Just as those before us shared their own encounters with God's love, we are to do the same. Might we have the impact on, of someone like Peter, who right before today's reading from the book of Acts, helped 3,000 people encounter the love of God revealed in and through Jesus Christ? Their encounter was, was so moving, it changed their hearts. It changed them from being people looking out for themselves to people who, as we heard today, began to look out for their neighbors in ways they may never have imagined possible. Might we be like that? Maybe. But I think we're going to be more like Philip, who through his one-on-one interaction,
interaction with the eunuch warmed the eunuch's heart so much that the eunuch accepted God's love right then and there. We don't always realize the impact one person can make. That is, unless we're looking for someone to blame. Then it's really easy. Consider the spread of COVID-19. <clears throat> it only takes one, they say, to begin spreading it like wildfire. So we hide it, just in case that one were to come near us. It's so easy to blame that one. Even if they are unaware of what they are doing. Then to consider our role that our actions or our inactions take in perpetuating the virus in our midst. But just as the spread begins with one person, so too does its end. And our actions might just make the difference. Each of us has the power to limit the ability of this virus to spread. Maybe not to the whole world, but at least to the world in which we inhabit. Like the disciples, our spirit-filled actions can and will make a difference in and beyond the life of the church. Might the church look different as we do so? Maybe. At least in what we can see. But as I said before, that which is constant, that which binds us together and is at the center of our identity, God's love remains the same. Always. And that, my brother and sisters, is today's good news. In the midst of all the craziness that surrounds us, finding something that we can grab onto that will keep us from spinning out of control is truly something for us to be thankful for. It is no wonder in the midst of the craziness that followed after our Lord's crucifixion that God's love made itself known to the disciples, proving to them that nothing, not even death, could come between God and those God loves, thereby giving them comfort, strength, and the ability to recenter themselves on what they truly needed. An awareness of God's love in their midst. A love that offers those who know it a peace which surpasses all understanding. Knowing this peace, they no longer feared what was before them. And more than ever, they felt they must share this peace arising out of love with others so that they, in understanding, might know this peace also. I've said this before, and it's worth repeating now. Letting go of our fear does not mean we throw caution to the wind, at least when it comes to protecting our health and the health of those around us. But neither should we hide. We must find ways to share our awareness of God's love with those around us in whatever ways we can. Not only might this give someone with nothing something to grab onto, but we might be that one voice that reminds someone of something they once knew, something they had forgotten through their fears or the rapidly changing world around us. How do we do so? We could stand on the corner and preach as Peter did, or we could be like Philip stopping and visiting with those we encounter along the way, sharing with them what we know, what we understand. Do not be afraid. While we may not be able to share the story Scripture tells in the way Jesus did with the disciples on that road to Emmaus, we are able to tell our own story. A story that reveals the difference God's love makes in our lives. 
In a few weeks, we're going to celebrate Pentecost. And I pray we're able to gather here to do so. But we don't have to wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as the disciples did. We already know what the Spirit reveals. We are already empowered due to the work the Spirit gives us to do. Because the Spirit, God's Spirit, already dwells within each of us. And because it does, we are assured of a truth that dates back to the very beginning. No matter what changes we encounter in life, God's love for us remains the same. And because it does, we have a hope that sustains us, strengthens us, and assures us that all will be well today, tomorrow, 